What's up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time, to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. In the last video, we went down the rabbit hole of microphone specifications. Today, we'll be discussing microphone selection. Now, at the end of the day, this all comes down to personal preference. Different people like the way different microphones sound, and there are a number of factors that affect why we use a certain mic or combination of mics when recording. Today, I'll be walking you through some of those factors, how they affect our microphone choice, and I'll top it off with a list of specific models that you can check out in 2021. Let's start with solo recordings. When recording larger instruments, such as keyboards, timpani, or even a multi-solo, in which you're dealing with a pitch range, you want to record these instruments in stereo, using two mics, as opposed to in mono, using one mic. This is because we want to capture the sound imagery. What this means is that we pan the audio from the two microphones to the left and right channels to create a more realistic listening experience for the listener, in which the low notes are heard on one side and vice versa. For solo percussion recordings that aren't drum set, the single most go-to setup is a stereo matched pair of cardioid pattern condenser microphones. Matched pair simply means that the microphones are the exact same and are hand matched for both sensitivity and frequency response. The cardioid pattern keeps the focus of the mics on the instrument with minimal bleed from other directions, and the stereo effect allows you to pan the sound left and right, making the sound image of the recording more realistic. The result is pretty great, and if you have your mics in the right spot and your input level set just right, you'll end up with a solid, focused articulation, great tone, and fullness of sound. For drum set recordings, the most commonly used microphone for the snare drum is the Shure SM57, and for the kick drum, the Shure Beta 52A. For podcasting and desktop activities, a few of the best choices include the Rode NT1, which you're hearing me through now, and the SM7B. You can also use something like an AKG 214, which you can hear in the Percussion Pedagogy podcast with Dr. Tommy Dobbs. If you're in a great sounding room, capturing the sound of that room is best achieved with omnidirectional condenser microphones. Omnis will pick up sound in all directions equally, and are typically placed further from the sound source, meaning they'll pick up less articulation than something more focused like cardioids. There may be cases where we want to avoid transients, such as marimba recordings where the player is using super hard mallets, or maybe younger players who haven't mastered the art of bar placement and are getting those nasty bright overtones from the instrument. Another method you'll see more and more these days is a set of either small or large diaphragm cardioid condensers up close to capture the transients and a set of omnis further back to capture the sound of the room. The choice of small versus large diaphragm comes down to preference of timbre. Large diaphragms are a bit warmer sounding and small diaphragms are brighter. For percussion ensemble recordings, there are obviously a lot more options. The safest bet is a stereo matched pair of omnidirectional small diaphragm condenser microphones. These will get you a nice balance between articulation and natural room decay, which again is also affected by all of the previously discussed factors. If you decide that you want more of a certain instrument or instruments, you can try using spot mics. A spot mic isn't necessarily a specific type of microphone, but rather refers to how we use them. Spot miking simply means that you're putting a mic in a certain spot to bring out a little more of that particular sound or instrument. Typically, you'll see either large or small diaphragm cardioid condensers used as spot mics, as they'll be able to focus more clearly on that individual sound without too much bleed from the surrounding instrumentation. As for which one works best, while the specs of small diaphragm condensers point to working best for up close and personal sound capture, I've seen and heard great recordings using both. And again, it comes down to whether you want the capture of that instrument to be warmer or brighter sounding. Just be thinking of how you want the instruments you're spot micing to fit into the mix and how your microphone choice can be used to create more timbral contrast. Before I get into specific models, it's important to understand that the microphones themselves are still only one part of the process. And as I've said many times, it's more important to know how to use them than the quality. So, make sure that you follow through with the rest of the series and learn the rest of the process before making any hasty purchases. So, what are the most common microphones used to record percussion instruments? 
While it's impossible to get your hands on every single microphone out there, there are some common trends you'll see once you get into this stuff. What I did was create a Google Sheet which compares some of the most common microphones used in percussion recordings, complete with specs, pricing, and links for you to learn more about them. While I obviously haven't used every one of these microphones, I can confirm that I've heard recordings using each of these microphone models that I thought sounded great. And again, a lot of why they sounded great had to do with how they were used. So check the description for a link to this sheet, and if you're using something that you feel like should be on the list, please let me know. Send me the name of the model and maybe a recording, and I'll add it to the list for everyone else to check out. Before we go, one of the best things you can do to measure the acoustical properties of the room is by using a measurement microphone, such as the Earthworks M30. While this is taking things a step further, if you're interested, check for another link in the description if you'd like to learn more about these. To review, the most common types of microphones you'll need to produce quality percussion recordings are condenser microphones. Cardioid condensers are best for getting a clear, focused instrument sound without too much bleed from surrounding sounds and omnidirectional mics are best for capturing the sound of the room. Small versus large diaphragm depends on whether you want a warm or bright sound, and both work well for stereo miking and spot miking applications. The best way to figure out what kind of sound you want from your microphones is by listening to a lot of recordings. As you do, you'll start to make connections between the microphones, the instrument, and the room recorded in. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're learning as much as I am, feel free to subscribe, and in the next video, I'll show you how to set up a microphone from start to finish. Until then, happy recording.